Alhamdulillahi wa barakatuh Bismillah Alhamdulillah Assalatu wassalam ala rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in Well Welcome everybody from around the world oh, wait, Let me just start that again uh, Sorry about that everybody One brief second here Okay, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Assalatu Wassalam, Ar Rasulullah. Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Welcome everybody from around the world. My name is Bilal Abdul Kareem, and my voice is whacked out today. Um, I was a bit sick uh, just uh, uh, after Ramadan, Alhamdulillah. It was delayed until I kind of got sick the last two nights um, before the end of Ramadan. But it's cool because um, I'm all right. My voice is a bit crazy, but the rest of me is uh, is doing pretty good. So alhamdulillah. Uh, and I didn't want to miss uh, hooking up with you guys. We've got some phew, some really, really um, important things that we need to talk about and we need to clarify. I'm going to make it clear before we even get started here <clears throat> that <clears throat> by the end of the show, some people are not going to like me. All right. I have to put that out there because we're going to be real. We're going to discuss some things and um, hopefully you'll be able to take it and we can exchange rather than just to, ah, man, you know, I'm going to find me somebody who I always agree with. Because like my brother used to say that if you got two partners that always agree, you don't need one of them. So we can have this space for disagreement. All right. First thing we're going to talk about um, here today is what took place last night. There was uh, an uh, Iranian attack on Israeli soil. This was the first time that the Iranians attacked, <clears throat> excuse me, um, attacked uh, Israel on their soil. Very first time, in spite of the fact that there's been a lot of talk and rhetoric and wiping each other off of the map. The reality of the situation is that it's the first time that it ever happened. Okay, but uh, what is the catalyst which brought that on? Well, um, before we do that, let's just ask everybody, hey, listen, y'all, um, why don't we get this algorithm thing really going here? Why don't you send us a message telling us where you're, you're tuning in from or something so that the algorithms will know that you're feeling good about this content and it'll be shared to more timelines. So, all right, after having said that, back to what we were talking about. Um, the catalyst which brought it on uh, happened on the 1st of April, wherein the Israelis uh, attacked, bombed, shelled the uh, Iranian embassy in Damascus, uh, killing uh, uh, some uh, diplomatic and military personnel. Now, this is not considered to be normal. It's not normal. I'm telling you guys. The last time an embassy was attacked was during the Clinton administration um, when the Chinese embassy was attacked in Serbia and that was quickly uh, denounced or apologized for by then President Bill Clinton. The Clinton administration paid for the restoration of the embassy and uh, gave compensatory uh, uh, funds to the affected families. Now, <clears throat> I wanted to put that out there so I didn't want anybody to think that you know attacking embassies is normal because it's not. Um, those uh, uh, diplomatic institutions are considered to be hands off even in a time of war. Okay. Now that we've that, that we've clarified all of that, the Israelis who are fighting a war on Gaza currently are <clears throat> attacking. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, um, are fielding rockets and missiles from Hezbollah. Hezbollah is an Iranian-backed group, and in addition to that, they're feeling the financial pinch because the Houthis, um, who are in uh, southern Yemen are also blocking shipping routes for Israeli vessels or 
other vessels which are going to or fro from Israel from entering into the Red Sea and therefore into the Suez Canal to have a safe trip to Haifa, which is occupied Palestine, also known as Israel. Um, they've been attacking those ships and they've been making it very clear they're gonna continue to attack those ships. So that's causing all kinds of problems for the Israelis. So on April 1st, they thought it would be a good idea to bomb the embassy in Damascus and and uh, and that was going to be their uh, response to some of the uh, actions which have been taking place um, from the direction of Iran. Now, we've covered that part. Now check this out, y'all, what happened last night, and then we're gonna go back and see what's what. Last night, the Iranians launched a barrage of um, projectiles that included um, drones, ballistic missiles, and other than that, all pointed in the direction of Israel. And as we started the show, it is the first time that, that there was an Iranian attack on Israeli soil. Okay. The, uh, the Iranians said it was a big success that they sent the message they wanted to send, don't mess with us. That was what was said. The uh, Israelis said it was a big success on their part because their Iron Dome and their uh, uh, Arrowhead uh, uh, missile defense systems were working great and some of their partners and allies Help them out. We're going to talk more about their partners and allies in a minute. Now, we've covered all that stuff. Let's go back to what led up to this so we can start seeing what's real and what's not. Directly after the bombings that took place on the Iranian uh, embassy in Damascus, the Iranians immediately began with a their own verbal barrage of we will vow uh, that we will respond and this will not go unpunished. You'll see Israel, ah, okay. So I was like, okay, bet. But it keeps going. And what happens is that when you're constantly doing that, you're constantly reminding the enemy, get ready because I'm coming. That's like saying, look, I'm gonna punch you in the eye. Now get ready. Got to hit you in the right eye. Here we go. Okay, you're going to be prepared for that attack. But we say, okay, good. Let's just see what happens next. Then after that, um, several days ago, I saw an article um, uh, uh, wherein the United States uh, 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 Intel was saying that an imminent attack is going to happen um, and it was covered by CBS News that an imminent attack in two days is going to happen using more than 100 drones on the Israelis. And I was like, wow, how did how'd that get out? But maybe it's just more talk. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I think you can already see where this is going. Then you've got the, uh, uh, the Iranians, which are continuing with their rhetoric uh, and none of it's slowing down. And therefore, you have the Israelis saying, our defenses are prepared. They close down their um, diplomatic missions um, in places around the world uh, so as to prepare for any eventuality as the Israeli government said that they would prepare for it. I bet. Y'all with me? Good. Okay. After all of that happened, and after uh, uh, we're continuing to hear that from the Iranians that an attack is coming, watch out, look out now, you're gonna get hit with it. We get to last night. Last night, the Iranians launch an attack. And I remember because I was in bed and the attack was launched and then their generals started to tweet 
and say that we launched an attack on Israel. Oh, but the missile's gonna take nine hours to get there. So why are you telling the people about it? What, what happened to surprise attack? Who says that we're launching an attack? We just launched uh, the, the rockets. They'll be there. In a couple of hours, they'll be there. That's ridiculous. Nobody does that. But they were on Twitter saying that the, the, the attack has begun. We've already launched it. And the rockets hadn't even arrived. They hadn't even arrived. I'm being real with you, brothers and sisters. You got to check me out here. Okay. So the rockets are still on the way. And the Iranians are already talking about how we've launched the attack. So I was like, nah, man, something is not right here. But I said, let's take a look and see where all this is going. So by the time I wake up a several hours later for Fedger, um, most of the rockets um, had gone wherever they're gonna go. Um, we have some of their allies who shot them down in the form of the Americans who said that they shot down uh, quite a few of those rockets. We also have the Jordanians who also shot down some of the rockets. Hmm, that's interesting. And the Israelis shot down some of the rockets. Now the Israelis said 99% of the rockets and the drones got shot down. Only Allah knows. The images that we saw are images um, of rockets and uh, 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 drones and such like that, just lights in the sky, boom, bash, boom, bash. It looks it looked like a video game. But then when the smoke cleared, I will tell you something. How many casualties, because they had, uh, uh, they had uh, targeted um, the uh, Nevatim uh, air base in southern Israel, <clears throat> which is supposed to be the base that the attacks on their uh, compound were launched from. All right. How many Israeli soldiers were killed? None. Not a single one. Okay. How many Israeli civilians were killed? None, not a single one. So now wait a minute, some of your military personnel got killed and diplomatic personnel got killed and you didn't kill any enemy soldiers. 300 drones and rockets, you ain't getting nobody? This is not, this looks strange to me. This looks really, really, strange to me. In addition to that, the airspace over Jordan, Lebanon, Iraq, and of course Israel were all closed. They were all what? They were all closed. Everybody knew ahead of time that the barrage was coming before it was even released. They closed the airspace after the rockets landed Ben Gurion Airport in Israel, seven hours after the attack, is open. Business as usual. This was all choreographed, brothers and sisters. I don't know what the Iranians thought they were going to try to pull, but the reality of the situation is that these guys are not being straight, and we here in Syria. <coughs> have extensive <clears throat> dealings with the Iranians to know. Guys, these guys are not liberating uh, uh, Masjid al-Aqsa, period. Let me make that clear to you. <clears throat> they have bombed Sunni uh, um, Muslims here in Northern Syria um, uh, uh, in assistance with the uh, Shia, <clears throat> uh, uh, changing the demographics here in Syria, replacing Sunni Muslims with Shia and uh, Alawite Muslims, changing the demographics, as we mentioned. In addition to that, bombing the areas of Pakistan, 
um, where there are more Sunni Muslims. These guys, the Iranians, are not the heroes that they want people to believe that they are. But there's also a precedence to all this because some of y'all might be sitting there saying, <clears throat> look, Bilal, all right, yo, I get it, man. Yo, the Iranians gave you guys a hard time out there. So you don't like the Iranians, I bet. But they're still going after the Israelis. So that means that, you know, you know, just be cool. No, it's not about being cool. And I'll tell you why. If we look at the attack last night, no Israeli soldiers were killed. Two, the attacks, I mean, took place at night. We've had now about 11 hours, 10 hours of daylight time. So you couldn't see the damage at night. But we've had like 10, 11 hours of daylight. Up until the time of this broadcast, I ain't seen not one picture of extensive damage in Israeli territory. I will say it again. Up until the time of the broadcast of this episode of the BAK show, I have yet to see any pictures of extensive damage done on Israeli territory, 300 drones, missiles, and everything all thrown, and you ain't got no pictures? What's up, y'all? Something ain't right. Something ain't right. The first thing, I mean, even if this Iranians don't have people on the ground, we can get some aerial shots. The Iranians were saying that they hit the Nevatim uh, 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 air base uh, in southern Israel. I bet you got some um, some uh, uh, some satellite footage. You got something. No, we ain't, they, they ain't got nothing. Nothing. I have no proof that these attacks were successful in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And the Iranians are saying that they were big time successful and we carried out um, and, and we achieved our goals. The Israelis are saying the same thing. I'm gonna tell it to you up front, just give it to you straight. Sounds like these two are working together. Now I know some people are gonna sit there and say, oh, that ain't right, B. Come on, man. We were all excited because of the attacks and stuff like that. Hey man, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you. But at the, at the end of the day, the, uh, it, the Iranians are known for doing stuff like that. I will tell you what I mean. Uh, General Qasem Soleimani was killed in 2020 um, under the Trump administration. You all know General Qasem Soleimani was the big time general who was causing all kinds of havoc all over the place. Americans didn't like him, decided to neutralize him, and Donald Trump um, decided to take the step. So. <clears throat> He, um, he, he knew that uh, Suleimani was at an air base in, uh, in Baghdad and uh, he uh, neutralized him through an airstrike. Okay. When that happened, Iran went ballistic verbally and said, we're going to respond. We're going to get you. You're going to watch and see. Think you could do our boy like that? Ain't going to be that way. Okay. Fair enough. They're right to respond. What was their response? They contacted the uh, uh, authorities in Iraq who conveyed to the Americans that they were going to attack them the next day. And what did the Americans do? <clears throat> they made sure that their people got out the way. But true enough, the Iranians did attack. Boom, 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 on two air bases. The result, zero casualties, zero soldiers killed from the Americans. Not a single one. Now you telling me that all those attacks, we're talking about last night's attack on the Israelis, we're talking about the one in 2020, um, on the American uh, air base, and y'all didn't get not one single American soldier or Israeli soldier. But here in northern Syria, Iranian bombs rained down on rebel forces and on civilians, and they get killed by the truckload. I've been here, I've covered it, so I know what time it is. And you're telling me 
that with all that stuff y'all got, you didn't get one, not one. And we're supposed to believe that this is all on the table. Brothers and sisters, you never know who's working for who. You never know who's working for who. And that's real. But let's take a look and see what some of your comments are. <clears throat> All right. We got B out there who said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, we will answer some questions. Okay. We've got Jabrain who's out there who says, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All righty. Oh, Jabrain's coming in from the Netherlands. Allah Akbar. Good to have you, man. Um, we've got, uh, we've got Camarade here. All right, here we go. He's here and he's got something to say. He says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Bilal. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, Iran may be on, only able to fight militias in Syria without anti-air systems. Big talk, no impact. You know, he, I think that is more than just um, anti-air, uh, 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 anti-missile systems. I think it's more than that, because um, if we look at how they handled it from the start, from the start, they were telegraphing what they were going to do. This, is, this was even before they even launched the missiles. And when they launched the missiles, they got on Twitter telling them, yo, it's coming. There's, there's something not right there. And that's putting it mildly. Um, I, so I don't think that it's just because of you know, oh, they've got anti-missile systems and such like that and all. I don't think that that's the case. Uh, I think that there's a lot more going on here um, uh, uh, than most people realize. And th th that's the reality of the situation. Um, we got Bird Nest Rat Fest in the house. And he says, Salam Alaikum. Welcome Santa Cat to BAK show done no. <laughs> Oh, Allah, Allah Akbar. Jazakallah khair, man. Um, Zoro says the Arab Dome protected Israel. Well, since we're on the topic, the Jordanians themselves actually shot down some of the missiles. Well, I wonder why they would do that. I wonder what their interest in that is. Hmm, that's interesting. Because it, 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 even on the, um, the Jordanian cabinet statement had come out and said, that um, because Jordan intercepted some, some of the flying objects that were over their airspace, and they said some shrapnel fell in multiple places during that time without causing any significant damage or any injuries to city to citizens. End quote. Okay, so we got the king who shot or ordered some of those uh, uh, um, projectiles to be shot down. So who's fighting? I don't. I, I'm, I'm losing cohesiveness here, guys. Whose side is anybody on? The Jordanians are on whose side? Are they on the Iranian side? Obviously not. They must be on the American side, but they can't be on their side too strong because they'll get eaten up by their own population. And then they um, they started to tamp down on the protesters protesting the famine that's going on in Gaza. So yeah, I, I think you're right, man. The, um, the Arab Dome protected Israel, and that's real. And in addition to all of that, we're not even talking about the fact that the, um, the Saudis wanted to normalize relations and all and do a three-way deal between the Americans, the Israelis, uh, and, and the Saudis, basically, um, the Saudis were going to recognize the Israelis, and in exchange for that, um, they were going to recognize uh, Israel, normalize relations with them, i.e., oh, that territory that you stole, <laughs> we recognize that as yours. And in exchange for all of that, the Americans were going to provide them with a NATO-style agreement where if they get attacked, i.e., from the Iranians, that they're going to come running. It's a horse and pony show, guys. I'm just being real with you. 
uh, Zuhir al-Islam says, people of Jordan need to overthrow Abdullah. Well, <laughs> brother, tell us something we don't know. That's real. Um, uh, Bernice Ratfest also said, um, every sucker believes Iran, LOL. You, you, you know what, you know, because people are looking for a hero. I'm just gonna be honest with you. When you get in your butt kicked up and down the block and all, you're getting smacked upside the head and you got some guys standing there with pipes and chains and bats and you know it's gonna be a long night. You looking for a hero, brother. You looking for somebody who's gonna step up and say, yo, yo, I got this. All right, go ahead, run. I got him. And that's how a lot of the people are. And they're looking for that hero. And sometimes <clears throat> they get duped into believing that they found one. When on the real to real, they ain't found anything. That's why some people are saying to me, Bilal, don't talk too much about it at this time because the people are happy because there's been some kind of response and this is more than the other countries are doing. Well, at least the other countries are not deceiving us. This is important. The other countries are a bunch of duds, bunch of dodos. And, but they're not trying to pretend that they're not. But the Iranians are trying to make it like, oh, yo, we cool, right? Me and you and everything. Got one hand around like that and a knife in the other hand. Be very careful of them. We've seen them kill thousands upon thousands of Sunni Muslims here in Syria. They'll try to tell you, oh, it's about Al-Qaeda. It's about Jabhat al-Nusra. Oh, it's about Ahrar al-Sham. The reality of the situation is that when they move the population out like they did in, in, um, in Aleppo and they did in uh, Damascus and in other places, they move their own people in. And that's real. Um, uh, so here's the slam says, why are leaders around the Arabian Peninsula lapdogs for America and Israel? It's not them. It's not them. It's us. It's us because we allow them to get to the place where they are. The companions of the Prophet wasallam didn't allow their leaders to lord it over them without being checked. They didn't allow for their leaders to just do whatever it is that they wanted to do. Um, and it's, whether it's Islam or not Islam, same thing, just do your thing. That's not what the way that they did it. And I don't think that's the way that it's supposed to be done. Um, when we have these leaders that are openly, like in Bahrain, they're openly with the coalition against the Houthis who are trying to put pressure on the uh, Israelis to stop the genocide. The Bahrainis are with them, overtly, not under the table, overtly. You've got the Emiratis who blamed Hamas for what happened on September, I'm sorry, uh, for uh, on October the 7th. Blame them, said it was their fault. They just forgot about the entire history that was behind it. Oh, by the way, uh, the Emiratis also um, have normalized relations with the uh, Jewish state as well. So, uh, um, you know, it's us because we're allowing them to do that. So therefore they're gonna be like, okay, bet, cool. If ain't nobody gonna say nothing, then why should I stop here? Sammy Yusuf says, Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He says, I think you suggest boycott Egypt as a tourist, but don't you think it will hurt local people who own tourist businesses and they are poor? Um, listen, uh, we got to be real. Um, you know, as a black person who grew up in America, um, who studied the history of how we went from slaves to presidency, um, uh, it would be wrong for us to say, look, we're gonna fight for freedom and we're all gonna get there. We're not all gonna get there. Some of us are gonna get killed. Some of us are gonna get put in prison. 
Some of us are going to get beaten up. Some of us are going to get run out. I mean, you know, did Martin Luther King uh, live to see Barack Obama as the president? No. Did Malcolm X see that day? No. Did uh, 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 some of the others uh, who committed themselves to the struggle, did they see it? No, they didn't. And it would be, it would, it, it would be dishonest to say that in the struggle, some people are not going to get hurt. They are. But we've got to work towards the greater good for everybody. So yeah, some of those people that are there in Tahrir Square who run the tourist buses and they've got these shops where they're selling all the haram statues and stuff like that and everything um, uh, for the uh, Sphinx and the pyramids uh, 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 and all blah, blah, blah and all. Yeah, they're going to take a hit. I'm not going to pretend to say that they're not. And I'm not going to tell you that all of those people are bad people because they're not. But I will say one thing, that if we're going to approach our liberation struggle by deciding what we do or we don't do, because there might be a small minority of people who are going to be uncomfortable, then we're going to be right where we are 100 years from now, brothers and sisters, or worse. Now, we have to be sure to take care of our brothers and sisters. No question about that. But after having said that, we can't pretend or even sell the idea that all of us are going to see freedom. We're all not going to see it. I might not be there with you. You might not be there. But if we all work for the pleasure of Allah, then the Ummah is going to see that success and we're going to see it after this life. And Allah knows best. Rabbi Yusuf said, um, Iranian embarrassed themselves. <laughs> I think that they did. I think that when you l launch all those drones and missiles, and I don't want you to think that I'm some bloodthirsty maniac, but dude, you went after the Israeli soldiers and you didn't get one. That's, th that sounds like a failure to me. I mean, it sounds like a failure to me. Um, Rabbi Yusuf comes back and he says, Sam Yusuf, the reason Egyptian people are poor because of the regime. Why regime wants to build mega city instead of helping the local economy? Yeah, it's, it's just not about the people um, out there in Egypt. I lived there for a long time and I understand the situation very well. Um, it's not about the people, y'all. You know, it's, it's, it's not. It's not about the people. I wish it was, but it's not. Okay, based black beard said, it's the Suleimani situation all over again. They called Trump and told him to evacuate a base so they can bomb it and save face. Well, that's what they did. That's what they did. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not understanding that. Now, the Iranians will say, well, look, we don't want this to metastasize into a bigger regional war. We made our point. We wanted to make it clear that we real men and you know, you can't come and bomb our embassy, embassy and stuff like that. Yo, they bombed your embassy and killed your people. You ain't killed nobody. I haven't even seen any damage from anything inside of Israel, period. That's just the reality of the situation and Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Um, we've got here, <clears throat> Xavier, who says, Salam, Achi. Do you think this will escalate things? Um, no, I don't think it will escalate things. I don't. <clears throat> because um, there's too much coordination going on between the Israelis and the Iranians. Oops, did I just say that? There's too much coordination going on between the Israelis and the Iranians. And therefore, I don't see a reason why they need to go to war. I mean, I don't see that the Iranians did anything that would be enough uh, to, for the Israelis to really jump in and, 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 and give some other attack. I think that the Israelis are gonna say, we will respond at a time of our choosing or something tough like that. And then that'd probably be the last you hear of it 
until the next incident. Um, you know, because uh, they, they didn't kill anybody. <clears throat> and so um, obviously everybody knew it was coming. Shoot, I was sitting in the bed and I knew it was coming. So I don't think that it's going to grow into anything more than it currently is. And Allah knows best. <clears throat> Um, we've got here, we've got uh, Muhammad Denix who says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, alaykum wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Slightly irrelevant question, but what do you, but what do Sir and Ulema think of guide dogs for the blind? Um, yeah, I don't know. Sorry about that. I, um, I don't know. Uh, we could ask. Um, I could ask and then um, I could get back to you. You could direct message me uh, the question and we can see what we can do, inshallah. Um, all right. All right, we got B here who says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I love you for the sake of Allah. And I love you for the sake of the one whom you love me for. This is your brother in Minnesota, USA, your old country. How is Syria and are the Muslims um, having dreams and glad tidings. Uh, I know I'm having dreams and glad tidings. Um, I, I, I dreamed that Damascus uh, has fallen and uh, some other good things. Uh, so, but you know, we can't sit back and wait for that to happen because those things might happen once uh, thing A and thing B and thing C are done. So we got to keep moving. We got to keep uh, keep fighting. Um, we've got uh, Jawad Akhlaq who said, what is the latest on the situation with Jolani and HTS? Brother man, let me give it to you straight. Um, we're going to be coming out with a report uh, tomorrow regarding uh, uh, Abu Muhammad Jolani and his arrest of two people, is Sheikh Shuaib um, and Misri and Isam Khatib. Uh, these two individuals were arrested back in July. They were basically kidnapped from the streets of Azaz. Um, uh, Sheikh Shuaib's uh, abduction was on video. We will be showing that tomorrow, um, if you haven't seen it already, um, wherein his stepson was almost run over by a pickup that slammed into him, and the guys jumped out and, and bundled him into the pickup uh, for months. Uh, Haya was saying, what, what, them two? Oh, man, that sounds bad. We ain't got them. I don't know where them two are. That's what Haya was saying. But then, lo and behold, a picture emerges. Sheikh Shoaib is with Ibrahim Shashu, one of the Shura Council members for Haya Tahrir Shem. And then the family of Isam Khatib gets a visit to go and see him. So once again, you have the authorities who are lying. The authorities who have no respect for the people, they have no respect, no respect for judicial process, and more than that. And we can't reveal everything that we know um, at this time, but inshallah, what we know, you'll know. Um, so, um, yeah, and Allah knows best. Uh, Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Bilal. We just saw Scott Ritter, the old weapons inspector from Iraq, doing the rounds on independent media, saying that the Israelis plan on pardoning Netanyahu and kicking him out. Yeah, <laughs> they do anything they want with that guy, you know. But I doubt there's going to be much pardoning because that's not in their nature. And, um, you know, they, 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 they're going to eat Netanyahu alive. That's why Netanyahu wants this war to continue going on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Um, we've got, uh, B says, how's your morale? It's been so long as if people forgot about what happened in Syria. SubhanAllah, uh, Iran and Israel hate each other, but Iran hates Sunnis more, in my opinion. I know that they say a lot of things about how much they hate each other. But the Iranians, I don't know who these guys are working for. I really couldn't tell you, but I can know one thing, they're not working for the Muslim Ummah, and that's all I need to know. 
You see, brothers and sisters, a lot of people will say, hey, man, you know what? Are the Iranians working for the Ummah or not? Um, what about the Jordanians? But I thought they w w wanted some good for the people of Gaza. But then you've got um, all the, you know, the West Bank and, and you've got Mahmoud Abbas and what's he doing? And you've got Sisi, who's the head of a Muslim country of 100 million strong Muslims. And, uh, and oh, man, I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. What do I do? I'll tell you like this. I think that this is easier to figure out than most people think. Here's the deal. The way that I see it is that the people have to make crystal clear one thing. They want Sharia. They want Islam. And forget about all of this, um, oh, but wait a minute, the international community might not want to be with us and we got to trim our beards and all just so that we can do the Islamic things, but just don't call it Islam. Guys, guys, that's over. That's dead. The international community is watching the people of Gaza get decimated and they're not doing a single thing. Actually, they're cheering on the Israelis. And those that are not cheering on the Israelis are basically just doing condemnations. Here in Syria, over a million people were killed. And because Russia is back in Syria and, 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 and all, and this is the only military base that they have in the entire Middle East, um, then, hey, the Sunni Muslims just got to take it on the chin. So I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, the international community has done nothing for you. They're not going to do anything for you. If they wanted to do something for you, those that want to do something for you, they don't have anything to do for you. So there's no reason for you to be like, well, you know what, maybe I should do it like this so that I don't look too Islamic. I should lower my pants right to my ankles just in case somebody might notice. Or something. Guys, it doesn't make a difference. You're Muslim, you're not practicing, you're not going to put forward your religion. You're not allowed to do that. So why are you pretending like, okay, well, you know what? I need to assimilate. They're not accepting you. You are persona non grata. If all you want to do is open up a, a falafel shop or flip burgers or something like that, yo, you could be Muhammad and Mustafa. Just stay right over there. Don't talk about no Islam. Don't try to advance no uh, uh, nothing. Don't you dare bring up the topic of jihad or else you'll really be in some hot water. But you're like, but I want to go and help the Muslims over there. What? What'd you say? Nothing. And that's the reality of the situation. So brothers and sisters, if we want to be serious, serious about advancing this religion, we have to understand one thing. One, everybody's not going to get there to the finish line. And you got to be cool with that. Two, do it for the sake of Allah. And that's the first thing. You have to do it for the sake of Allah. And three, Let's all work as best we can together. We're going to have some differences. Uh, after Rukur, you put your hands here. Another one puts their hands down here. All right, man, it's cool. Ain't no big deal. You do that. You still my man. Let's get to work on some other bigger and better things. And that's where I think that this whole thing needs to go. Forget about international law. It's dead. And don't let anybody tell you, but wait a minute. In international law, you can't do that. And you say, okay, in international law, you can't make a famine either, can you? Oh, but they're doing it and ain't nobody doing nothing. No, in international law, it also says that you can't bomb hospitals. Well, they're doing it anyway. So at the end of the day, they want you to play by, the, by their rules because their rules are not our rules. Our rules are the Quran and Sunnah. They want you to play by their rules, but they themselves won't play by their own rules. So for this reason, we have to say, look, the only system of governance that we will accept in any country, any Muslim country, is Islam. If you're not doing Islam, we're going to overthrow you. That's it. You're out. CC pack your stuff and start heading for the airport. And I think that that's what we need to do, and Allah knows best. All right. Um, we're going to wrap this thing up. Um, <clears throat> Let's see here.
Um, all right. Uh, all right, we've got here. Okay, um, we've got one last one. We've got Ishaq, um, who's in the house. He says, Aki, Iran didn't fail. From what I've been told, Iran hit 75 targets, all military targets as well. The Iron Dome failed. The rest will never, the West will never admit defeat, even though Hamas is inflicting casualties. Okay, I listen, I'm, a, I'm prepared to be, uh, um, to be corrected, but I got a problem, I, and you can direct message me if you've got some information. Just before we went on, I've been scanning the internet for damage that the rockets from the Iranians did on Israeli territory. Dude, I ain't seen it. So the point that I'm making here is that myself, as a journalist, and also, first and foremost, as a Muslim, that if an, oh, you will believe that if an evil, rebellious person comes to you with news, then to verify it. I can't be nostalgic. I have to see something. Got to be something on the table. Because if there isn't, then it's just more Iranian talk. And I've seen so much Iranian talk over the years. Now, if they've been, now if they've hit 75 targets, and those 75 targets have real damage on them, there are no casualties. That's the first thing that's strange. The second thing is, is that at least, because maybe somebody will say, okay, the Israelis are hiding their losses. Cool. But you've got satellites. Let's see some satellite imagery of some of the damage that you caused. I haven't seen it. And until I see it, I got to be skeptical. All right, man, my voice is, 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 uh, is, is about to give out. Jazakumullah khair. I'm really, really appreciating everybody for joining us. I am your host, Bilal Abdul Kareem, for the BAK Show. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.